many of you um, know us or have heard about us. And sometimes uh, when I present about who we are, people learn new things uh, about the organization, things that they had no idea about. Um, and I always answer a lot of questions. So um, as I'm talking, you know, just jot down some questions you might have, and um, I'll answer them all uh, when, when we're all done. So just a brief overview of the rescue mission. We are 134 years old. We were formed in 1887 uh, by six local church congregations came together to try and address the needs of homelessness. Um, and really, um, I guess you would say it was um, not great behavior from a lot of people who are working on the Erie Canal um, and working uh, in different cities and traveling the Erie Canal. And so um, <clears throat> there was a lot of um, uh, drinking back then was a big deal. And, uh, and it sounded like from everything I've read, the rescue mission um, wanted to try and create something similar to what was in New York City. So the Bowery mission um, in New York City is where uh, we kind of got our, our blueprint. Um, and in 1887, they brought up some <clears throat> individuals from New York City to try to help formulate how best to serve um, people in need. Um, while the church uh, kind of helped to fund it, uh, the church knew that it couldn't actually do that kind of work on a daily basis. So the Rescue Commission was formed. And, you know, I always point out, if you think about uh, organizations that are 134 years old or that started in 1887, there isn't one, there isn't a lot of us left. Most uh, organizations don't last that long. And two, that's before a lot of things, you know, before cars were a thing and before uh, combustion engines. And, you know, if you think about, um, you know, how boats used to get around the Erie Canal, they were towed, they weren't, you know, self-propelled motors. Um, so we started a long time ago. We've been through all the world wars and major conflicts. We've been through um, any number of presidents. And I continue to point out that um, in my, my tenure at the mission, we've had Republican presidents, Democratic presidents. Um, our elected officials have changed somewhat in political parties. And yet um, there's continues to be a need for people who hit rock bottom. And so I think that's why the rescue mission uh, remains um, able to receive people um, 365 days a year. So I've been here for 14 years. I've been the CEO for the last four years. Um, my, I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, but uh, my father's job transferred us up to Syracuse uh, years ago, and I'm a graduate of Cortland State, and I got my master's in social work at Syracuse University. Um, and so I'm definitely uh, a social worker at heart. But um, when uh, the last director was leaving to take a job in a nonprofit in Washington, D.C. Um, I never thought I'd be the CEO of anything, but uh, the stars aligned, I guess, and the board of directors um, convinced me that I was the right person for the job. So four years ago that uh, I was named the CEO, and it's been a great four years. Even with a pandemic under my belt, I can say that I'm still um, – having a good time leading this organization. We, we definitely have the best um, employees in the world, just compassionate hearts that uh, wanna see people get back on their feet and get to their highest level of independence. So at the rescue mission, we put love into action through shelter, food, clothing, and hope. And we do that in a variety of ways, but everybody that works at the rescue mission, their job is helping someone who hit rock bottom, and is hungry or homeless or housing insecure. The way each employee of the Rescue Mission does that looks very different. For example, we have 20 thrift stores throughout central New York. When our employees are working in our thrift stores and selling used goods, they're doing that because they're helping someone who is homeless or will be experiencing homelessness in the near future. So their job may be to sell used goods clothing and goods, but the reason they do that is because someone in need is going to show up at our shelter at some point in time. So we diversify somewhat of how we make money and raise dollars. Um, about Of our 100 
percent of the pie. Um, Sixty-five percent of the money we need every year comes from our thrift store sales, and then another twenty to twenty-five percent comes from generous donors who uh, give one-time gifts, or some people give every two weeks like clockwork to the rescue mission. And then finally, we have about 10 to 15% of our revenue comes from government contracts and grants. And that looks different than many nonprofits because um, many nonprofits operate on 70 or even 80% um, government contract grant funded, um, which isn't a wrong model. It's just, um, it's more difficult to really create the type of programming you would choose to. Um, and you have to find the right grant dollars to fit into your mission. Well, we generate most of our own revenue through these thrift stores. And um, it's a little known fact, and there'll be a little bit of press about this in the upcoming weeks, but Rescue Mission Thrifty Shopper stores are celebrating their 60th anniversary this year. So 60 years ago, um, Clarence Jordan and all his wisdom may he rest in peace, had this great idea to sell used clothing, used home goods that people would donate because they're getting rid of it. They know it was going to a good cause. And the rescue mission would then turn around and sell it in, they had one thrift store back then. Well, we've taken that model and expanded it greatly. And um, through partnerships with you know Wegmans and Walmart, um, where many of you and many of your friends and family donate their goods, uh, many people donated a lot during the pandemic when everything was closed down, everyone cleaned out their closets. I can say that we were a recipient of a lot of those goods. And so we take all those goods to a, a warehouse in um, on Henry Clay Boulevard. And at this warehouse, we have about 75 employees that are just sorting through goods, clothing, um, you know, houseware, and we process it and send it back out to our thrift stores. And then we make money off of it. And those dollars we make create our shelter operations, our case management services, our employment resource center, um, our street outreach. So everything we raise goes right back into the programs that we provide. And another way we are different than many nonprofits is um, many nonprofits are either affiliated with or a subsidiary of a large church organization like a diocese or a large um, international church like us, like the Salvation Army is. But the rescue mission is 100% local and independent. So we were formed in Syracuse in 1887. We've been here since 1887. Um, the board of directors that I report to is all local um, individuals working and living here in our community. And none of the dollars that we either raise or fundraise for or get donated leave this community. So um, there's no uh, national rescue mission um, body. There are other rescue missions throughout the country, but they're all independent and not really affiliated. So we are totally independent. And I push that message pretty strongly because um, many people like to give locally and want to support um, people who hit tough times locally here in Syracuse, and we're probably the best um, the best way to do that if you gave um, to, to the Syracuse Rescue Mission. We do have programming in Auburn and Binghamton, much smaller programs, uh, but we went into those communities because those, those communities asked us to come and provide services. So we don't have the approach of which neighborhood, which community should we go into next. Um, sometimes those communities come to us and say, we've got a really nice um, location or we've got a lack of services and gap in needs and services for women and children, specifically in Auburn. Can the rescue mission come and provide um, the programming? So that's how we expanded into those areas. But um, my goal is uh, in the next 10 years, I would like to uh, become known as the rescue mission housing provider as opposed to the shelter provider. So when you come downtown to our campus, we have about eight acres of land right uh, kind of behind Armory Square. And on that eight acres is our one outreach thrift store where we give all the clothes away. So yes, we do take a lot of donations and sell them, but there is one store downtown where we give it all away to people who are 
uh, just don't have enough money, don't have enough resources, they're looking for more clothes for their kids. We work with a lot of um, refugees and people who are fleeing domestic violence situations. So all the clothes given out downtown are free. Um, also on our campus, we have 28 single apartments for men who were homeless, and that's kind of their first step out of homelessness. And we keep the rent very low at $400 a month. We also have a 59 bed adult home. Um, and I'll tell you, most of the guys that live in our adult home, um, they would not fit in a typical adult home. So that is managed by the Department of Health. They oversee all of our regulations. Um, but there's 59 guys that have created a community there and live there right downtown. Uh, and then we also have our beautiful Clarence L. Jordan Food Service and Culinary Arts uh, Food Service Center. And that's where we provide and make three meals a day, 365 days a year. We have a giant Christmas dinner, a giant Thanksgiving dinner. I'm always on the news for that. Um, I haven't, I've been at the rescue mission for the last 14 Thanksgivings and the last 14 Christmases, and there's no place I'd rather be. And then finally, we have the largest shelter in upstate New York, where we have 181 beds. 50 of those beds are for women and the rest are for men. And we see ebbs and flows of homelessness. Um, surprisingly, but not so really in homelessness numbers have gone down over the last uh, year. Part of that is tied directly to um, the moratorium on evictions. So if you can't be evicted, it's harder to become homeless. Uh, but of our 188 bed shelter, uh, we have had many nights throughout the winter where we've had 200, 200 individuals staying in the shelter. Uh, right now, I think last night I heard we had about 104 people staying in the shelter. So at the rescue mission, somebody hits rock bottom. They've burned every bridge with family, friends, whoever, and they show up at the rescue mission. We meet, meet with them and try to figure out where they're at and where they need to get to. And we come alongside them to try and figure out um, what's step one. And it looks different for nearly everyone that comes through the door. Um, what I've seen much more of in the last, I'll say the last five to seven years is the increase of individuals coming to the shelter with um, severe levels of mental health issues. That is a key contributing factor to homelessness in our community. Um, Yes, drugs play a part. Uh, alcohol plays somewhat of a role, but severe mental health issues for sure is um, a large contributing factor to individuals being housed um, in apartments or in homes. And I would go so far to say that we don't necessarily have the proper housing for all individuals. So if someone comes to the rescue mission and they've got severe mental health issues, to alleviate their homelessness, you could just place them into an apartment. But will they be successful? Will they be disruptive? How soon before they are evicted and then they have to return to the homeless shelter? So um, a case could be made that we do not have adequate proper housing for many of the individuals that we're serving right now. So that's what I see the rescue mission and the future of the rescue mission could potentially be uh, a housing provider that is creating the right kind of housing for um, the individuals that we're seeing come through the shelter. Um, again, we do this uh, year in, year out, 365 days a year. Um, Auburn, our programs look a little different. Uh, we There is a large number of women uh, and homeless children in Cayuga County. And uh, the past plan for those individuals was to just put them up in a motel. And so the community said, could the rescue mission come and provide housing for those women and children? We uh, came up with a really nice plan in partnership with um, the uh, Auburn Housing Authority. And so in Malone Village, we have about 150 units where we serve uh, mostly women and children, some men, but many of them have experienced domestic violence and they were living in unstable, unhealthy situations. And the motel didn't provide much for them. If you think about uh, if you're uh, fleeing a bad situation with your kids and you get placed in a motel, 
in general, motels don't even have a kitchen for you. So we found out that these families were making uh, microwave meals and staying in uh, motels for months at a time. And so we've got really nice housing units with a community center built right in the middle of the cul-de-sac where kids can come for homework help, computer help, uh, books, any school supplies they need. And then our staff uh, essentially creates um, uh, like groceries. So if, if individuals uh, come to our, our facility and they don't have any, any money, any resources, we can provide them with food, shelter, clothing, and then make sure their kids are um, in a healthy environment and not missing school. Um, unfortunately, kids, for the most part, are along for the ride of their parents' homelessness. And so we try to come around kids um, and give them all the resources and supports and try to make it as, as least traumatic as possible uh, because, you know, they're just, like I said, along for the ride. In Binghamton, uh, the community asked us to provide housing for men because one, there is a lack of um, affordable housing in the Binghamton area. And then two, um, there was a shelter, but after the shelter, you kind of needed to get right back into the community. And so sometimes that is a big jump for a lot of people who've experienced homelessness. So our, sh our um, housing operation in Binghamton, we can have 33 men staying with us at very low rent. And again, it's a step out of homelessness. So it helps people to stabilize. And that's what we need more of in our community as well. If you hit homelessness, after homelessness, after we've stabilized, your situation, we've tapped into resources for you, whether it's emergency assistance or you got a new job or um, whatever income stream you've got in place, you need a step out of homelessness, whether it's an apartment for $400 a month, which is in a nice neighborhood and it's controlled and it, it feels like a clean, uh, positive place to live. And then maybe from 400, we, we get you in an apartment that gets up to six to 700. And then after that, once you hit the 1,000 and above, you're starting to integrate back into what a lot of people in the city of Syracuse are experiencing with rent rates right now. But there is no incentive for housing developers to build this kind of housing. We want really high-end housing, and we want to charge really low rent for it. And that doesn't make sense for housing developers. So I think that's why um, organizations like the Rescue Mission are going to need to start to develop that kind of housing for the future. So um, I've, I've kind of given you a, a, the rescue mission in a nutshell. Um, I would love to answer any questions you might have. I love the work we do. I love that we're local, we're independent. Um, I do have 16 different bosses that are uh, my board of directors, but they're all great people. And again, we have about a staff of 380 to 390 employees, and they're all working to help end hunger and homelessness in our community. So Fire away any questions you might have, I'd love to answer it for you.